How's it going guys? Joshua Lefemi here in beautiful Melbourne, Australia. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna be doing something that I like to call the duplication effect. Now guys, in order for this effect to actually work, you've got to use a tripod. It's crucial. Before we continue, I gotta tell you about our channel sponsor, Envato Elements. I personally call it the Netflix for video editors because it's a subscription service with a massive library that contains literally the most useful video editing assets that would literally blow any video editor's mind. It's actually funny because I actually see people talk about elements all the time in YouTube ads just like this, but they don't ever show any of my top favorite products that are actually on the site. I've downloaded probably a couple hundred assets from elements just this month. And guess what? You can see a list of all my favorite effects packs in the link below. They are amazing, they're incredible, and they're definitely worth signing up for Elements just to use them. Elements is only one price, once a month, for literally unlimited downloads, and you can get a ridiculous discount with my link in the description. Check it out. Open up After Effects and create a new 1920 by 1080 comp with 30 frames per second, and make sure it has a 10 second duration length. When you shoot your footage, make sure to shoot it with as high as a frame rate as you can, in this case, we're shooting with 100 frames per second. Import in and drag your footage to the timeline. For this effect to work, you need two things from your footage. One, a clean plate, basically an empty shot without your subject, and then two, a shot of your subject walking from one end to another. Now guys, scrub through the timeline and even drag the footage if needed to find a section without the subject in it. This will be our clean plate. Now trim the beginning and the end of the clean plate using the shortcut keys, Alt left bracket, and Alt right bracket and drag to the beginning of the timeline. Next, rename the layer clean plate. The next step is optional, but since we're going for a super surreal look, we're going to slow down the clean plate footage. To do this, select the clean plate layer, right click, hover over time, then select time stretch. Since we want to slow down the footage, let's increase the stretch factor to 200%. Drag your footage again to the timeline and place it on top of the clean plate layer, then rename it. We will call this layer Roto. Once again, click through your footage and trim the footage to the beginning and the end of the walk, then drag the layer to the beginning of the timeline. Now it's time for rotoscoping. Move your playhead halfway through the roto layer, then select the layer, and in your toolbar, click on the roto brush icon, then double tap in your composition window. This action will open a new window. Now paint over your subject. If it brings this error, it means that the composition frame rate doesn't match with the footage layer frame rate. To fix all this, all you gotta do is press Ctrl K in the timeline and change the composition frame rate to the requested amount, in this case, 100 FPS. Now go back to your roto window and start painting over the subject. Before we continue, with the roto layer selected, head over to the effects controls panel and make sure that you are using roto brush 3.0. Continue with the roto brush process and carefully paint over your subject. If you accidentally highlight areas you don't want to include, simply press and hold the alt key while painting over those sections. Additionally, you can adjust your brush size by holding down the control key, then clicking while dragging. For a more realistic effect, make sure to include the subject's shadow in your selection. Move the playhead forward and let After Effects analyze and refine your rotor brush selection. If you notice any drifting or inaccuracies in your selection, navigate to the first frame of the issue and make the necessary adjustments. Repeat this process till the end of the footage. It's important to note that we began rotoscoping from the middle of the footage. So to complete the process, move your playhead back to the middle and start refining your selection backwards. It's ideal to move frame by frame in some cases, so you don't miss any spots. You can use the shortcut key, Control plus left, right arrow key to do this. Once you are satisfied with the results, click on the freeze button to solidify your rotoscope. Now, freezing your rotoscope takes a lot of time, generally anyway, so go and grab a cup of coffee. Once Rotobrush is done freezing, go back to the composition window, and with the roto layer selected, head to the effects controls panel. Increase the feather slightly and experiment with the shift edge value until you achieve a visually pleasing result. 
Now press Ctrl D to duplicate the rotor layer and move it slightly backward. You already see the effects taking shape. Repeat this process as many times as you want. Just make sure that the rotor layer isn't overlapping a lot to keep it looking real. Also play around with the positioning and distance of the layers to each other to achieve different cool looks. And that's it guys, thanks for watching.